My name is Mary Cheney. I am the owner and managing attorney of the law offices of Mary and Cheney, PLLC, better known as the Cybersecurity Law Firm of Texas, and welcome to the Breach Whisperer blog. Um, in this blog, we will be talking about privacy and cybersecurity issues worldwide. For those of you that are familiar with my written blog, this is an extension of that or replacement for it, depending on my time and, and my ability to um, record or write and or write a blog posts. So, I mean, um, if you're if you guys are interested in in my previous works, if you can click on the link below and it'll take you to my law firm website where the, the blog posts are there are there. Uh, don't forget, speaking of links, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. So I know you guys are asking me why in the world or would we want to watch anything about cybersecurity and privacy? I mean, it can be highly technical. It can be full of acronyms. It could be legalese. It can be technical terms. And, you know, because I feel like cybersecurity and privacy are they're not going away. And, you know, I, I want to be able to share the knowledge that I have. I mean, in this video blog, we will be trying to educate the masses on, masses on cybersecurity and privacy. Um, so, and things that you come across on a daily basis that you may not even think about that may uh, may affect you going forward. So um, we will do this through articles, excerpts of speaking events that I may do, just basically any random things that, you know, I come across and, you know, find that I'm, you know, hit and record on certain things. I think that um, it's very important. I'm, I have a unique perspective. I think, you know, based on my background, you know, I could look at things from the cybersecurity perspective, the privacy perspective, you know, it could be the hacker or the criminal perspective, the law enforcement or investigator perspective. It's, it's so many different things that, you know, are happening in, in cybersecurity and privacy that you guys may not think about. And at, at being an owner of my own law practice, the things that come across my desk are amazing. So be warned, I may switch, you know, hats mid-sentence. <laughs> And, you know, hopefully it's just to get get you guys to think about things and uh, in a different way. And please feel free to send me anything that you may find that you, that you think I may find interesting. It may just make the blog. You never know. Um, caveat here. I'm a public speaker. I don't believe in too many edits. If I mess up, I mess up. So let's get started on your privacy and cybersecurity journey. Hi everybody, welcome to the blog today. Um, I, you know, I want to talk about this article that I read today, and um, it's going to be a little self-serving. Uh, and and I'll get when I'll get I'll, we'll talk about that when it get to get to it. But it um, the article is entitled "Do Mid-Sized Companies Need a CISO?" For those who don't know, a CISO is a Chief Information Security Officer. I've heard it cost CISOs, CISOs just CISO. Um, that's what I'm saying when I say CISO. Um, and that individual is in charge of basically running your information security management program, whether that be risk management, whether that be security operations, whether that be, you know, governance, incident response, whether it be, you know, legal and regulatory compliance, you name it, the chief information security officer has their hand in pretty much everything re re in regards to those items. So um, the, the thought that many companies, no matter, you know, especially the small and mid-sized segment, they, you know, are not necessarily designating individuals that are responsible to oversee these matters. And whether it's a startup, whether you mature and you get to a point where you, um, you, you've you gone beyond startup, you know, I've, I'm just finding that, especially based on the, when I get my phone calls, that a lot of organizations are still not being proactive, which is disappointing because, you know, there, there are, there have been plenty of breaches out there to put people on notice. There are plenty of things out there that, that put people on notice that maybe we should have somebody take a look at this. But the article was talking about, um, three things, no matter what size you are, that may, you know, you, you may have to have someone designated it with that title, you know, the industry, of course, you know, banking and healthcare, are those industries that, you know, 
you you have to have somebody designated, you know, based on the regulations themselves, um, even in transportation, even in um, energy and things like that. You have to have someone that has their um, that has the view, the overall, the overarching view, I'm sorry, of your program. Um, if, if you're regulated, if you're in the industry that's heavily regulated, that's also, um, one of those things. And also where you look, where you're located, um, regulations, if you're doing, um, a business with uh, organizations in the European union, you have GDPR to deal with CCPA, California Consumer Privacy Act. You, you're going to have to deal with that if you have California citizens data. And so um, doesn't matter what business. And let me let me back up it for the CCPA, GDPR regulations. Those are comprehensive, which means it doesn't matter what industry that you're in. You have to re, um, you have to be able to comply with those regulations. That's the difference between um the comprehensive legislation that the EU has in the United States we have industry specific laws right um so i think we'll save that for another day i'll get down on a tangent on that if i try to explain that but i, I i'm sure you guys get the gist but you know one of the things that you know my i come across are clients or vendors of those organizations that have requirements and usually your parent organization or your data controller, the person that actually is in, you know, the person you're doing business with that owns that data from a public pay, uh, facing perspective, uh, usually they will flow down, meaning through contract language, make you also as a vendor um, required to comply with the regulations that they're required to comply with. And it's not a negotiable item at more, more often than not, it's non-negotiable because if you are doing activities for an organization that has consumer data, you whatever you're doing, if you're touching it, you're processing it, then, you know, you have those requirements to protect that data because consumers look at the the data controller, the person that they're giving their information to, they, they don't really care about your, you know, your subcontractors, but you know, through contracts, that's when I come across it, when organizations are now required to comply and they're trying to struggle or bolt on what would be a information security management program to say they're in compliance without necessarily having a comprehensive understanding of what it is because they don't have a chief information security officer. Now, I don't, there are certain companies, there are certain small and mid-sized companies that you may not just have the the money for a full-time resource. And that's where this becomes a little self-serving because, you know, I offer the virtual information protection services, which is a virtual CISO, chief privacy officer type of relationship with some of my clients where I am, I take control over it. I take the worry out of, you know, them worrying about privacy laws, information security laws, what they need to comply with, how that data is. I just, I just so happen to have the tech side and the legal side. So I'm able to provide a unique um, viewpoint or vantage point when, when putting together information security and privacy management programs. But I think that we're getting to a point and, and, and I'll keep saying this and I think I've been saying, I've been, um, chicken little for long enough here, but we're just getting to a point that organizations can't just wing it. Right. Because you and I both know it, whether you're in a large corporation or small corporations that, you know, people don't always tell the truth about where they are from a maturity perspective. So I'll, you know, the, 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 being able to be confident that you're doing everything that you can is a very, very important, um, it's very important to you getting sleep on a nightly basis. I think, I think if you are not doing everything that you can, you know, you could be doing more, but you're not, then you're still just kind of sort of playing pressure luck. So, you know, the, like I said, the one thing that came to mind to me, the mid-sized companies and things like that, you may need a chief information security officer. You may need a virtual chief information security officer or chief privacy officer just to get you where you want to go. I think that if you, if you, if you're a company and you have one person that is handling all of your information security issues, you need help. You need help. That one person can't handle the day-to-day operations and try to keep a strategic 
uh, viewpoint over the whole program. So, you know, like I said, just really interesting article at, on on whether or not companies do need that. And and I just wanted to point out that, you know, it's not oftentimes that it has to be those three things, industry, regulation, or, you know, location. At times, it's just you're doing business with someone that has those requirements and you just have to comply. So hopefully you guys learned something today. We'll talk again soon. Bye. Are you a VIP? More importantly, are you a cybersecurity law firm of Texas VIP? What's VIP, you may ask? VIP stands for Virtual Information Protection. For those organizations that may not need a full-time resource to handle their cybersecurity and privacy needs, they can hire the Cybersecurity Law Firm of Texas on an outsourced basis to handle those needs. If you want to learn more, please click the link below. Hey, everybody. My random thought for today, the... Equifax data breach settlement. You remember last year that Equifax came out and said they were going to pay um, those that have been impacted $125. Um, and everybody went out to get their $125 only to realize that it's probably not going to be $125. Well, I, I was one of those people that, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, they're not giving me $125 because of course they make you um, there's, 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 there's this fine print. So you can choose free credit monitoring. Um, but if you already have credit monitoring and you plan to have credit monitoring, you can, you're, um, you can apply for the $125, which is what I did. I have credit monitoring. Actually, I have two, um, there are a couple of breaches, you know, I, I get it free for one and I pay for the other. Uh, so I put the one that I actually paid for on my claim form, but um, it, it it was just interesting to me. Oh, tomorrow. Well, what is it? January the 22nd uh, is the last day that you have to fill out that information for the settlement information. So it's coming up. Uh, so if you haven't um, filled that information out, please go ahead and do so. And if understand you have to collect the information about the the monitoring service that you plan on having for the next six months uh, that you're, I guess that you're paying for. So go out there and claim your $125. We'll see. I'm, I'm going to do another random thought when I get my check and see exactly how much I'm going to get um, from Equifax. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks again for listening to the Breach Whisperer blog sponsored by the Cybersecurity Law Firm of Texas. Don't forget to like this post and subscribe to our channel so you can get updates of when we post new things on our channel. In addition, spread the word for me, right? Let's get out there and tell a friend and so they can all become paranoid cybersecurity and privacy people. Uh, don't forget, if you would like to connect with me on socials, you can connect with me on t Twitter. Uh, at Mary N. Cheney. Use my middle initial always. Um, for my nonprofit, Minorities in Cybersecurity, that, that is at Mike Leadership. And Instagram and Facebook at MN Cheney Law. And you can find me on LinkedIn just by searching for my name. So if you're interested, connect with me. Thanks again. And just remember, awareness equals knowledge.